Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Amanda. And this is Yeet the Press. We're two friends who have a comedy podcast about politics. We're not pundits, wonks, or Beltway insiders. We're just regular people trying to make sense of the news. And it is fucked. very special Thanksgiving Day episode of Eat the Press, which is basically like every other episode of Eat the Press, just right around Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're going to release it the day before Thanksgiving, and then you guys can listen to it in the car with your children. Actually, don't do that. This is not safe for children. <laughs> we do a lot of bad words, I think. So I think this is, should we label our podcast? I feel like we should. Oh, no, we do. It's actually labeled Not Safe for Work. It's labeled explicit, sorry. Explicit. Okay. I was, yeah. was going to ask you about that because I was uh, thinking about it, and I was like, oh, we say a lot of... Yeah, know, sometimes I say, I say the fuck word. The fuck word. The shit word. So, yeah, I don't want to, you know, get people in trouble. You know, I've been really, really good about not saying the N-word on this podcast. You have. I, I think it may have slipped once. Is there a reason? I don't know. I'm trying to be... Well, you know, I don't know what the podcast audience is like. And I'm not just dropping the N-word in mixed company because white people feel empowered by shit like that. They think they can say it. That 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 is true. Certain white people. Not all white people, but certain white people. I agree with that. All right. Here's the deal. If I drop the N-word and you happen to be listening to this show and you're white... Just omit that shit when you're telling your friends about it, because I want you to tell your friends about the show. Right. And then when you're saying what Jason said on the show, don't say the N-word. Yeah, you can't be Don't like quote Jason him. Like, right. You can't be like, Jason was like, this nigga Giuliani said, no, don't say that. Just be like, Jason said Giuliani said. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump into it. Uh, our first story, we're going to do a couple stories, and then, of course, we're going to do our asshole of the week. Which we have not discussed, but we'll save that for the end. Um, our first story is about uh, Lev Parnas. Uh, he was one of the two associates of Giuliani who was indicted on campaign finance violations involving the Republican Party donations. He also had a company called Fraud Guarantee. <laughs> Fraud Guarantee. I, I, lo- I looked up why he did that because he... He wanted, if people Googled his name and the word fraud came up, he wanted it to be associated with his company. <laughs> and not his that personal like, life. Yeah, that was how he got around being a real fraud. Did he get around it? I don't think so. I don't think he did. <laughs> um, so this guy, he apparently turned over audio, video, and photos of Trump and Giuliani to not only the SDNY, SDNY, but also the House Intelligence Committee. Um, and so he's also trying to get the House to call him so he can testify against them. And then on Friday, he also alleged that he helped arrange meetings in Ukraine for Devin Nunes, the ranking Republican on the House Intelligence, Intelligence Committee. And also he's a man who sued a pretend cow running a Twitter account. Um, uh, Is it a cow or a pig? It's a cow. It's a cow. And you know what? His suing that cow made that cow go from 600 followers to like half a million. What a dumbass. Yo, I I have like 970 followers. A fucking cow has. I know. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta sue somebody so that we can get more Twitter followers. Um, all right. So he alleges that Nunes, he was in Ukraine in December last year, and apparently the trip was arranged during a time period so Nunes wouldn't have to declo- disclose any details, really, about his trip to Congress. And then so <laughs> Nunes went on Fox, vowing to sue CNN and, I think, the Daily Beast, because they broke the story. And then the interviewer asked him point blank if the allegations were true, and Nunes refused to deny him. He was just like, uh, you know, this, I think he said something like, There's, this is involved with a crime, so I can't talk about it. Crime being CNN and 
Daily Beast. (laughs) (laughs) Journalism is now a crime. Right. Not that he did the crime. They did the crime. So then this triggered an ethics complaint from the Democratic Coalition accusing Nunes of abusing his official office. And then they... The disclosures revealed that he spent $57,000 in taxpayer funds to this trip to Europe. And he did this trip to Europe so he could prove, help prove the the crazy fucking Ukrainian server theory. So it's been a crazy couple days with this idiot. So you want to hear my wild, wild take on this? Oh, I do. Nah. That's it. That's my take. Really? Yeah, no, here's the thing. It is fucking crazy that Devin Nunes and the GOP are acting as defense attorneys for Trump. Yes. But this one issue I don't think is that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. I will, we'll put it this way. I don't think it's illegal. And at this point, everything we see from the GOP is just... Uh, malfeasance and fucking corruption and this is just like regular political chicanery if it doesn't rise to the level of crime and shit i can't care anymore okay so that's fine if you the Nunes stuff doesn't bother you but let's talk about the fact that lev parnas gave audio video and photos to the house intelligence committee what's on those photos come on it what it, i mean do, are they dirty tapes what is it dirty tapes of trump and giuliani how is he taking these videos? Like, does he have, like, a ring doorbell? Like, would you go to Lev Parnas' house? No. Clearly, his shit is bugged. I mean, Lev Parnas' defense. I, I mean, he uh, he's creepy looking to me. He looks like that um, Pepe the Frog. <laughs> That's who he looks like. He's got this <laughs> bulging eyes and that, like, sad look on his face. Though I think that sad look got worse because apparently he... Uh, he was stonewalling investigators, and he had Trump's lawyer as his lawyer. And then Trump said, um, I don't know him, because, you know, that's what Trump does, is he doesn't know anyone ever. He do- I don't know how he knows anybody, really. But um, so he, as soon as Trump did that, Lev was like, well, well, what? And he just, like, flipped on everybody, basically. I mean, they, they've got Lev Parnas dead to rights. He knows he's going to do time. And he has no loyalty to these people. Parnas's loyalty is to Ukrainian oligarchs and probably the Kremlin. Probably. I know that the other guy's not talking, but the other guy apparently is way richer than him, so he doesn't have to talk. Um, he can just pay lawyers, but I think this Lev Parnas guy is not as rich as he is. So he needs to get bring down his, you know, uh, time that he can do. I guess I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't, honestly, I don't think it's going to matter what's on the tapes. Um, I think I've said this before. I think even if the tapes have like Giuliani going. Let us do a bribery and extortion on Ukraine and Trump saying, yes, I will do a bribery and extortion. It is it's, it's not going to matter, even if they say that. And You're absolutely right. Do you remember the first R. Kelly trial back in, I want to say maybe 2001? It was all about the sex tapes with him. Um, Where he peed on the 14 year old? That's the one. I didn't want yes. to say that. Uh, Amanda, let the record show that Amanda took it to a dirty place. Uh, but I just stated the facts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I didn't take it nowhere. So, R. Kelly was acquitted of that crime. Yeah, how? And there was a tape. So, his defense was, it wasn't me. He pulled the it wasn't me? Yeah, it was a shaggy defense. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a combination of the Shaggy defense and the Little Man defense. At the time, the Wayans brothers, uh, two of the lesser Wayans brothers, came mm-hmm. up with a movie called Little Man where they superimposed one of their faces onto a child and he was supposed to be a little person impersonating a child. Right. Kelly's lawyers 
said that that technology was used in the tape to put R. Kelly's face on the body that was urinating on the child. Oh, my God. And so, okay, wait, the pr- prosecution didn't, couldn't find an expert to be like, no, <laughs> they didn't do that. Also, who, but, who, would, who would do that to him? Who was behind this? <laughs> who is I this conspiracy he, doing this to him? I think he suggested that it was his brother. Oh, my God. That's insanity. Oh, we've got to do an R. Kelly podcast at some point. Oh, would, but bring it back in. No, they're just going to say, it's not me. No I'm, matter what video well, evidence we see, they're going to call it a deep fake. I was just going to say, that new, ne- that new technology is scary. It's scary. That, I mean, maybe it's not quite to the, to the point where the, like, the, um, the uncanny valley is gone, but it's almost there. Right? I mean, right now, it's, I think the primary usage of deep fakes is uh, porn. making celebrities appear to, as if they had done pornography. Yeah. Which, this isn't like an, this is an all smut cast. This is what? It is, is all, yeah. after we said at the very beginning <laughs> that it wasn't safe or, or explicit. But yeah, like if you were to Google any young, attractive female celebrity's name and... That's just wrong. Well... Well, you're going to get it. Well, one of the suggested searches is going to be feet because that's how the Internet works. But if you would like to Google that person's name and sex tape, there would invariably be a scene that is not, in fact, that actress. It's just it's a deep fake. And that's what it's a relatively prevalent technology. I actually listened to this podcast. Um, it was a radio lab podcast about when this technology just first came out and the scientists that developed it, the, they were... They ha- to me, it struck me that they had not thought about the implications of it at all. They hadn't. It was just, we did it because we could do it. Really, that's literally what one of them said, which is just disappointing. <laughs> um, do you think it's really going to be the fraud guarantee guy who blows this whole thing up? The fraud guarantee. He's the fraud guarantee guy. He's going to blow the whole thing up. Or your money back. Yeah. Or your money back. Um, yeah. I just don't know. And we touched on the, this a bit last week. I don't know why they couldn't have incorporated the obstruction of justice into the impeachment trial, the hearings. I mean, that's something we know he did dead to rights. Like, if I were to go out on the street and rob somebody, which, you know, if you guys don't match like and give us five-star ratings, I might have to do shit like that. But if I were to go out in the street and rob somebody and get caught, the DA would throw 46 charges at me. Yes. Hopefully, you know, the, the goal is to get me to plead guilty to one of them. But also it's because the more charges there are, the more likely there is that one of them is going to stick. Right. And I don't understand why House Democrats are sticking to this one fucking point when Trump does a crime a day. I Okay, I don't know that they have ruled out obstruction of justice. I think that that might still be part of the articles of impeachment from everything I'm like reading and hearing because he was uh, actively obstructing justice as the hearing was happening. Um, I go back and forth on this, like if they should just incorporate everything he's done or just leave it at the Ukraine thing. And I, I like right now I'm at like it should just be the Ukraine thing cuz it's very simple. It's very clear cut. He clearly used abused the power of his office to ask a foreign government to help him win an election. That's so clear. But is that more clear and transparent than firing Comey to stop the Russia investigation? That's pretty fucking transparent. Yeah, but I feel like, I know, I agree. I don't disagree, but I feel like that was already, we went through that with the, the Mueller report. And even though you and I know, and most people who are not insane understand that the Mueller report did not exonerate him, a lot, a lot, that there's a lot of people that don't pay attention and they just go, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, nothing came from the Mueller report. Well, he tweeted that he was totally exonerated. Yeah, and then that stuck. That's what the Republicans do. They are so, so good at talking points. 
and so good at staying on message. I wish the Democrats were better at it. It just, they're so, it's so disappointing that they don't do that very well. Um, yeah, so I don't know. You know, who knows? I, I don't The Republicans know. are just generally better at politics. They are. At, they're not afraid to just say shit and they don't pander. They, they they have moved the country right, further right and further right. And, like, to the point where, really, if you think about it, Bernie Sanders is considered extremely left. But if you put him in a European country, he's, like, centrist left. C- center right, even. I mean, he's, like, in the center. His beliefs are yeah. in the center. But here, he's, like, crazy. You know, like, oh, my God, health care for everyone? What? Well, how can we do that? And we're the only country that doesn't do that. Um, yeah, so they're just really, they're really good at not having any morals. <laughs> That's basically it. Our next story. The story is near and dear to my heart. And why is that? Because you're from, you were in the military. Is that why? Yeah, I actually was in the military. I am not, in fact, a war criminal, and I, um, I don't have any great love for the military or service members. I sympathize with poor people sent off to fight wars they didn't start. Yes. But I don't valorize military service. Right. But uh, earlier this week, the Secretary of Defense Mark Esper fired. Navy Secretary Richard Spencer, who is not actually the alt right Richard Spencer. I know. I thought I kept every time I read his name, I was like, "Wait, what?" And then I was like, "Wait, not that one." It's just a. It's a very common name. It's just a very common name. I'm sure this Richard Spencer probably isn't too fond of the colors either. I have nothing to I mean, base that on. I, yeah, I was just gonna say, don't, yeah, that's like co- that's a bit. That's a little bit extreme. Come you know what? I was in the I was in the military. I was in the I know these people. You, so upper brass, like upper brass, is that what they're called? Upper brass. I don't even know what they're yeah. called. <laughs> is that how oh. they feel? Oh, the term I was, the group I was thinking of was white people. Oh, white people, right? right yeah, right, yeah, right, I know right, those right. people. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. So any, anyway, Spencer was fired because of a disagreement with Esper in the White House about the treatment of Navy SEAL and war criminal Edward Gallagher. Who was convicted. Yes, convicted of one crime. Mm-hmm. So Gallagher was uh, accused of killing an ISIS fighter in U.S. custody and court-martialed. He uh, posed with pictures of the corpse and posted them on social media. Gross. Uh, he, and he was convicted. It was a 14-year-old, correct? So at the time of the court-martial, records said that the prisoner was 12. <gasps> We don't know exactly how old. Oh, my God. And and so he also was accused of stabbing. After the, from what I read, he the, the, it was an ISIS fighter who was 12 or 14 and was being helped by their med, our medic, the U.S. medic, because that's what we do, correct? We don't, if somebody's, isn't that how that works? I mean, I, I don't, what is that called? I don't even know. Well, so, the the kid was a prisoner in U.S. custody. Here is what we know. These are the facts. Two Navy SEALs testified that Gallagher stabbed the kid in the neck multiple times. Do you know why Gallagher was acquitted? Yes, because the medic um, who, who was given um, immunity for testifying... On the stand, he said, he's the one that killed the kid. Right. He said that after, even the medic who said he killed the kid said that Gallagher stabbed him in the neck. He said that he, the medic, exfiscated the kid as a mercy killing after the stabbings. So Gallagher was acquitted on a technicality because they don't know exactly which action killed the kid oh the stabbing in the neck is what killed the kid come on yeah like that is why he was acquitted and trump and a lot of people on the right took up his cause took up his cause 
Yeah, take my skulls. Like, he, he's a hero. Well, like, it's never been debated whether or not this guy stabbed an unarmed prisoner in the fucking neck. Not only that, but other, the SEAL, he was turned in by other SEALs, but basically his own unit. A lot, all, almost all of them in his own unit, I think. Mm-hmm. And they all also alleged, which he wasn't charged with, but they alleged that he shot um, a, a young girl under the age of 10 and that, she, that he also shot at um, an old man. And bo- obviously both of them unarmed. Yeah, with a sniper rifle from distance. <sighs> Probably in the back. But... Right. So this guy's a piece of shit. As evidenced by the fact that he posed for a photo. Yeah, that that is that's the only thing he was convicted on. Right. So what the Secretary of the Navy and actually the commander of the Navy SEALs wanted to do was take away his trident. Right. Which which would be devastating if he was fucking Aquaman, but he's an actual human being and taking away his trident just simply means he doesn't get to be a seal anymore right it's but but it's dishonoring him it's taking away his honor and his respect that he it's like a very big thing with navy seals but i mean he was literally court-martialed and convicted oh and as part of his court-martial he was demoted Mm -hmm. from the rank of master chief to uh we believe petty officer first class or he was a master chief he's a chief petty officer and was demoted to First petty officer, first which class. is only one rank demotion from what I read. Right, so Trump personally intervened and reversed the demotion. And and why did he do this? He did this because um, this Fox and uh, Fox and Friends co-host Pete Hegseth, he has taken up the cause of not only this guy but like two or three other war criminals on his show, and um, coincidentally. Trump has pardoned two other war criminals. Yes, exactly. So he's taken up his cause and spoken directly to Trump through the TV because Trump is an idiot and takes his orders from Fox and Friends. Um, (laughs) How can I get on Fox and Friends? Oh, my God. (sighs) Guys, that's why you have to like and share. (laughs) (laughs) I can just pull a bait and switch. I can just talk reckless about black people all day on Twitter. And just establish myself as one of these MAGA Negroes because there's always a market for black people who are willing to debase themselves and their people. I, I could I'm going to let you, shit you say all that stuff. <laughs> um, actually, somebody, a black guy, went on Fox and Friends. I don't know if you saw this clip today. But um, I guess he tricked them into thinking he was going to talk about something else. <laughs> and then Oh, damn, went, somebody just did this? You just did this today. And then he went on and... The guy, the host played a clip of Tucker Carlson saying something, and I don't know, something unrelated. I mean, you know, Tucker Carlson is an idiot. And then the black guy was just like, um, why is Tucker Carlson still on the air? And the host was like, uh, "We, w- this is not what we're here to discuss. And he was like, no, I want to know why he's still on the air. It was great. It's a good clip. You should look it up. Uh, maybe I'll. Uh... You know what? We'll add this clip. To the pod, just like we did last week. With last week's last week's <laughs> <laughs> Just go Google that shit, guys. Um, yeah, so back to the story. Oof, that's, you've done like four or five minutes just explaining the story. So yeah, so Trump, uh, you know what? I'm going to let Trump speak for himself. Donald Trump tweeted two days ago on November 24th, I was not pleased with the way that Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher's trial was handled by the Navy. He was treated very badly, but despite this, was completely exonerated on all major charges. By fucking technicality. I then restored Eddie's rank. Likewise, large cost overruns from past administrations, contracting procedures were not addressed to my satisfaction. Therefore, Secretary of the Navy Richard Spencer's services have been terminated by Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. I thank Richard for his service and commitment. Eddie will retire peacefully, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. But then... He literally said the reason he fired the Secretary of the Navy Mm -hmm. was because he wanted to discipline a war criminal. It's it's insane. How are we living in this world where 
the president always sides with the bad guys. He always sides with the bad guys. Always. He sides with Putin. It gets even crazier. New reports have, have said that Trump has expressed interest in campaigning with Gallagher. He literally wants to take the child murderer out on the road because his fans will eat that shit up. They will. They eat up everything he does. I mean, good on this guy, Spencer, for, you know, he did like a very, very heated resignation letter. (laughs) Like, he basically was like, said, I'm not going to get down with this. This is bullshit. I mean, go Google it. It's all in, you know, very pretty language. I'm not giving it its due. But um, you know what kind of worries me is, and I'm not saying that this Spencer guy was a good person, good guy, or I don't know anything about him. But, like, he clearly has some morals. He clearly understands the ethical code of the, the military. I think he respects the military, and the dignity of the office. Now we're going to get somebody who's just a, 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 you know, a Trump lackey. Somebody who will do whatever Trump says. Because that's all that's left. It has been speculated that it is his goal to just push everyone out of the office who can have nothing but lackeys in. I think so. I mean, he's got nothing but yes men around him. People, here's the thing. I keep asking myself, why is everyone so afraid of this man he doesn't nobody seems to actually like trump no one seems to actually like him on a personal level why are they so loyal to him why are they so afraid of him i get that his base is very loyal but i'm talking about the people that work for him like nobody has a spine nobody has courage i mean i have some theories but it involves going down conspiracy theory rabbit holes that Ooh. we don't have enough time for today. Do we have, enough, we have a minute? You, can you spit, let's put one in a minute? Bush did 9-11. Okay, well, you know. Oh, wait, no, that, that's irrelevant. <laughs> that's an unrelated conspiracy theory. <laughs> oh, man. There was not much comedy in this story at all. No, no, there is not. And... Oh. Do you mind if I go to a really dark place? I mean, do it, Jason. Fuck it. I'm I'm going there. Do it. I think that Trump pardoning war criminals and standing behind them is indicative of a potential plan to weaponize the military against civilians. He wants the troops to know that if they're asked to commit atrocities and do so, he's got their back. I think this is what what the right-wingers like to call virtue signaling. Oh, my God. I think you're right. Holy shit, I didn't think about that. Because I this whole time I'm like, it feels like, you know, the people in charge of the military don't like Trump. They don't have his back for the most part a lot of them don't like him and don't respect him right i don't think it's a matter of liking trump i think these people have sworn an oath to uphold the constitution and they might be uh, they might be complete and total shitbags but they believe in the oath that they took right so but they are not on they would not go along exactly they would not go along with see i you know my theory is trump is not going to leave if he loses in 2020 i'm telling you he's not and so i go people you know i argue with another friend of mine and he's like no that it's not gonna happen the military won't let that i'm like yeah maybe the like military leaders wouldn't let that happen but the rank and file there's way more of them and they like trump exactly and he's reaching out to rank and file maga chuds saying i got you guys yeah go go kill civilians I mean, I don't think that's that crazy of a theory, Jason. All right, well, if you guys like this, I've got more crazy conspiracy theories for later episodes. We should move right along to our newest running feature, 
Welcome to week two of Biggest Asshole. Who was the biggest asshole this week? Um, you want to go first? No, I'm, I'm going to let you go first. I think I went first last time. Okay. I'm going to say, um, based on the fact that he twice on TV said that uh, he has insurance so Trump won't throw him under the bus, it's a Giuliani. <laughs> what? Giuliani? Yeah, man. He ha- he's crazy. You're not going to believe he's this. He's an asshole. What? You're not going to believe this. My Where's asshole your... of the week is also Rudy Giuliani. Get out of here. Just get on out of here. Let me tell you what happened. I don't normally do this because I'm old and washed. I went out to a nightclub. Ew, why? I, I did. It was, it was a thing with the wife and other couples. Ugh. But was it terrible? It fucking sucked. Was it loud? I, not life today. And like, like young people just being obnoxious and... I kind of wish it was that. You know what? Like, nightlife today is all built around bottle service. And I think we owe bottle service. I mean, he didn't create it, but I think the proliferation of bottle service has a lot to do with Giuliani. Mm. Back in 1926. Right. So, before my day, New York City passed what they called a cabaret law. The cabaret Mm -hmm. law forbade establishments from allowing more than two people to move rhythmically at the same time without a cabaret license meaning you needed a specific license to have dancing at a club yes we went to we went to a couple clubs when you lived in new york that didn't have cabaret license and i think i remember it was at moe's we would dance but then there'd be a dj and everything but then it'd be like y'all have to stop dancing i don't know moe's is really strict about that right but they'd have a dj (laughs) and i'd be like but you got a dj we all want to dance I mean, dance as long here. as only one person was dancing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because at some point, Giuliani discovered this long-forgotten law in the books and started enforcing it, and they would literally just shut clubs down yeah. because three people were fucking dancing. It's terrible. I remember that. Yeah, and it sort of killed New York City nightlife, and then nightlife was sort of reborn, where everything's built around bottle service, where you got to pay for a table, and you got to spend, you know, four hundred dollars for a Ugh. thirty-two bottle, dollar bottle whiskey, and that shit is all because of Giuliani. He's been out of office for you know, going on two decades now. I don't even live in New York, and this fucker is still ruining my life. So yeah, Rudolph Giuliani, your asshole of the week. Yeah, he's asshole of the week. Yeah, he is asshole of the week. Well, I'm glad we agree. He um, did you did you read what his he said his insurance was? It's like so backwards. He's like, his insurance is, if anything happens to him and he disappears, that all this documentation about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden will come out and come to light, and I'm like. What? Don't you... Isn't that what you want to happen? Why are you threatening that this is your insurance? Yeah. Is that what you were... I thought you were still investigating that. Like, what are you asking Ukraine to do if you've already got the info? He's so bad (laughs) at this shit. (laughs) They're such dumb fucking criminals. I hate them all so much. I I can't stand that nigga Giuliani. (laughs) <laughs> He's the god. No, no, that, that was a great time. Don't be quoting him. Don't be quoting him. Nobody can stand Giuliani, that horse teeth motherfucker. Okay, I just got mean. We shouldn't attack people on based on their looks. Yeah, that, that was that was unkind. Oh, I'm sorry. He deserves it. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, if you're listening to this on your ride home for Thanksgiving. Check your racist family members. You don't have to be kind. Of, like, correct them. Yeah, come Just on. Just step up. Use your privilege. Say, Granny, fuck you. You're racist. You don't even have to say it like that, but come on. Come on, y'all. Don't let shit slide. Call people out. Yeah. Let Granny know she's a bad human being who is going to hell if it exists. I mean, if it exists. Yeah. Well... Our intro music is by Kevin McLeod, friend of the pod. 
Yes, he is a we friend love of you, the Kevin. pod. He doesn't. We, he doesn't know it. I love this bit. That he has no idea we're using his music. Creative Commons, bitches. Um, if you like the show, tell your friends, please. We need we need listeners. Uh, go go follow us at, at Eat the Breasts on Instagram and Twitter, and go give us a five star rating because that shit matters on iTunes. On podcasts, it helps us to get new listeners, um, which that's what we want. Because one day we want to do advertisements, don't we? Yeah, I would love to do as I. You know what? As for the Coke Brothers, as for crack Coke, I don't. I'm not gonna sell it like that. I want to just do some like Quip toothbrush ads and like sock and underwear ads. That's what I'll do. Like some bo- some Bomba socks yeah, or I'll something. Do those ads. Maybe, maybe Audible. Sure, why not? I'll do those. Um. Wouldn't you guys like to have an Audible promo code? I, If you guys listen, we can get an Audible sponsorship, and I can give you promo codes. I, I, you can leave off the last S for savings. That's, we do that for you. We will. Um, enjoy our Thanksgiving music as we go out. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rabbit. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Beans, greens, beans, greens, beans, 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 greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rabbit. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Beans, greens, beans, greens, beans, 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 beans.